Hello, today we're diving into how to build a 16-bit priority encoder, step by step. We will start with a simple 4-bit encoder, understand how it works, and then use it as a building block to create a 16-bit version. Let's break it down logically. Let's take a closer look at the truth table for a 4 to 2 priority encoder. We have four inputs, A0, A1, A2, and A3, where A3 has the highest priority and A0 the lowest. The encoder produces three outputs, Q1 and Q0, which together represent the binary index of the highest priority input that's set to one, and a valid signal that tells us if any input is active. For example, if all inputs are zero, there is nothing to encode, and the valid output will be zero. That's how we know the output isn't meaningful. But if, let's say, A1 is one, and all the rest are zero, then we do have a valid input. The valid output will be one, and the encoded output Q1, Q0, will be zero, one. And here's the nice part. The valid signal is easy to implement. Just take the OR of all inputs, A0, OR, A1, OR, A2, OR, A3. If at least one input is high, valid will be 1. Now let's drive to the logic equation for Q0. From the truth table, we identify when Q0 equals 1. After simplifying, we get this equation. Q0 is equal to A2 bar and A1 or A3. This tells us Q0 is high if either A1 is active while A2 is off or if A3 is active. Q1 is even simpler. Looking at the truth table and simplifying, we get that Q1 equals A2 or A3. That means Q1 will be high if either input A2 or A3 is active. Now that we have a working 4 to 2 encoder, let's level up. We're going to build a 16 to 4 encoder, one that can handle 16 inputs and output the index of the highest priority active bit. To handle 16 inputs, we will divide them into four groups of four bit. Each group is connected to a 42 priority encoder, which produces a two bit output and a valid signal. Now here's the trick. If any of these encoders detects a valid input, we pass its valid signal to a higher level encoder. This le top level encoder takes the valid signals from all four lower encoders and tell us that at least one of them was valid. Hey, if you're finding this helpful so far, do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe button down below. It really helps the channel. All right, here's the big question. When we have four encoders working in parallel, how do we know which one to listen to? The first step is labeling each encoder based on the group of input it handles. For example, the encoder for A0 to A3 is labeled as 00. zero and so on, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. These labels become important because they tell us the group index and form the most significant bit for our final 4-bit output, Q3 and Q2. Let's say encoder 1, 1, the one handling A12 to A11, detects a valid input. That means that Q3 and Q2 will be 1, 1 because that was the highest group with an active input. But what about the other two bits, Q1 and Q0? Here's the clever part. Each encoder products its own two-bit output showing which input inside the group is active. We only want to take the output from the winning encoder, the one that has the highest priority one. To do that, we use multiplexer. And guess what controls the, the multiple multiplexer? the same Q3 and Q2 bits that told us which encoder won. So that MOOCs select the appropriate Q1 and Q0 
from the correct encoder block. In the end, our full 4-bit result, Q3 to Q0, tell the complete story. Q3 to Q2, which encoder group had the highest priority input? Q1, Q0, which bit inside the group was active? It's an elegant and modular way to scale up priority encoding from 4 input to 16 or even more. Let's run an example to see our 16-bit priority encoder in action. Suppose two inputs are high, A6 and A9. Since this is a priority encoder, it should output the highest active input, which is A9. So we expect the final output to be the binary representation of 9, which is 1001. We start at the first layer, the four 42 encoders. Each one processes its four input bits and determines whether it has a valid input, and if so, which one. Looking at the valid lines coming out of the first layer, we see that two encoders detect activity. The one handling encoder 01, which includes A6, and the one handling encoder 10, which includes A9. So their valid output are both high, and they're fed into the second level encoder. In the second level encoder, we're now encoding the group. Which encoder block had the highest priority active bit? Here, A9 belongs to encoder 10. So we get valid one, something's active, Q3, Q2, 10, pointing us to the third encoder block. Now that we know the winning encoder block, number two, we use multiplexers to select its internal output. Those multiplexers controlled by Q3 and Q2 pick the encoded output from that block. We combine the two parts, Q3, Q2, 10, group 2, Q1, Q0, 10, the second bit within the group. Together we get 1001, the binary code 49. And that's exactly the result we expected.